Hey everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we'll cover a problem from the electrostatic section of Pathfinder. So this is problem number 19 from the check your understanding section. So in this question, we have a non-conducting ring whose radius is R and mass is M and a particle whose mass is equal and they're both at rest in free space, meaning they are very far away from each other so that the electrical interactions can be neglected. An amount capital Q of positive charge is uniformly distributed on the ring and the particle is given a positive charge of small q. The particle is imparted a velocity of U towards the center of the ring. We have to figure out the maximum speed the ring can acquire during the subsequent motion. So now the thing is this particle over here is imparted a velocity u towards the right. Now as it gets closer and closer to the ring, the ring is going to be repelled away. So we have to figure out the max speed attained by this ring in this particular case. So now let's begin with the analysis. So this is the situation given to us in the problem. Okay, the so first thing, let's just uh, try to write down the forces acting on the ring and the point charge. The ring will apply an electrical force on the point charge towards the left. So let's mark it as F. And the same force F is applied by the point charge on the ring towards the right. Okay, now the thing is, as we can see, the net force on the point charge plus the ring system is actually zero. So if F net is zero, then we can say the acceleration of the center of mass of the system is zero, which just means that the velocity of the center of mass is constant, okay? And the velocity of center of mass, uh, we can easily figure out. It is just M1 U1 plus M2 U2 upon M1 plus M2. So you'll simply get U by two, okay? So the center of mass at this particular instant is exactly midway between these two masses and it is moving towards the right with a velocity of u by 2. Now, whatever happens to the ground frame velocities of these, of these two charges, the velocity of the center of mass will always have to be u by 2 towards the right. Okay, it will never change. So it would be a good idea to actually solve this problem in the frame of the center of mass. Uh, so for now, in order to observe everything in the center of mass frame, all I have to do is subtract the center of masses velocities from the individual masses. So the plus Q will move with a velocity of U by two towards the left, right? And the ring will move with a velocity of U by two towards the left. Okay. Now, as we are solving in the center of mass frame, the center of mass will be at rest, right? So, so the coordinate of the center of mass is going to be fixed. Uh, from here, we can also get an interesting idea. So if as the, as both the charges have the same masses, right? It means that if the left point charge moves by a small distance dx to the right, then the ring must move a distance of dx to the left in order to keep the CM fixed. Otherwise the CM's coordinate would change. Okay, so now the main key point in this question is that there could be multiple cases happening here. So the first key point here is that the charges actually repel each other, which means they might come to rest before they reach the center of mass. So meaning there could be a case where the point charge comes here and the ring comes over here and they both come to rest together. So this is clearly a possible case and now they will be accelerated in the opposite direction. So this is one possible case. Okay, so now let's take it case by case. And another important idea here is guys that both the ring and the point mass will come to rest at the same time. And this is because in the center of mass frame, the net momentum of all the masses taken together is actually zero. Meaning if the mass on the left had a momentum of P towards the right, the ring on the right must have a momentum of P towards the left. Okay. Uh, which means that if one, if this guy comes to rest, then this guy must also come to rest. Uh, otherwise the net momentum won't be zero. Okay. So now let's take case number one which is the most simplest case that we can think of. Okay, so let's say this is case number one. So in this particular case, I'm assuming the ring and the point charge plus Q to reach the center of mass and come to rest simultaneously. So at this particular point, both of their velocities is zero. So the X coordinate of the point mass and the ring is both the same in this case, and they're both present at the center of mass. So now let's conserve energy between the initial situation and the final situation. So initially only kinetic energy of the masses was present, right? So, and in the center of mass, we can write the kinetic energy of the system as half mu times uh, V relative squared and finally as both of them come to rest in the center of mass frame only the electrical we have to only consider the electrical interactions uh, so the electrical potential energy is going to be k q1 q2 divided by the distance between the charges which is going to be smaller and guys here v relative is the difference in the velocity vectors in the ground frame so in ground frame the difference in velocity vectors is u initially right so substituting the value of mu as m by 2 v relative as u Okay, so now substituting the value for mu and VREL, we obtain the value of U as this particular value. So basically, if U is equal to this particular value, then in the center of mass frame, what will happen is finally the ring and the point charge will come at the same location as the center of mass, and then they will both be at rest. 
right now guys as they're both at rest here and there is no force acting along the x direction so in this particular case they will finally come to rest in the center of mass frame now uh, now remember guys the center of mass was in the ground frame moving towards the right with the velocity of u by 2 okay so the ground frame velocity of the ring is going to be the velocity in the center of mass frame which is zero plus the velocity of the center of mass which is u by 2 towards a right so in the ground frame what will happen is both the point mass and the ring will together start moving with the velocity of the center of mass in the final case okay so in order to draw a rough diagram finally both the ring and the charge will move with a velocity of u by 2 towards the right so in so basically what's going to happen is as we project the charge towards the right it is the ring is going to start accelerating and finally its velocity will become u by 2 and we were asked to find the maximum speed of the ring right so that will be just u by 2 in this case so basically we figured out if u is equal to uh, this particular value then the maximum speed of the ring in the ground frame will be u by 2 okay so this is for case number one so now let's talk about another case okay and case two let's take uh, let's say if u was less than this particular value you guys might have gotten the idea then what will happen is that both the charges will come to rest before they reach the center of mass so the point charge might reach somewhere over here and the ring will reach somewhere over here and then they will both come to rest over here okay but in this situation as you can see they are going to repel each other right both the charges are going to repel each other which means they're going to accelerate in the other sense. So now let's discuss it formally. Okay, so in this particular case, as we discuss, the point charge will come to rest somewhere over here. Okay, and uh, these two distances are actually equal because the center of mass lies midway between these two charges, right? So basically now we initially projected, they finally came to rest at these two locations and then they'll start repelling each other so that they start moving in the opposite direction. Now initially guys, both the ring and the point charge had a speed of u by 2, right? So finally also this speed must be the same uh, using energy conservation and momentum conservation. So the ring will have a velocity of u by 2 towards the right. Now why is the magnitude also same? It's because of the fact that I explained earlier. The net momentum has to be, has to be 0. So that's why their speeds are also the same okay so uh, so now we can just superimpose the center of mass's velocity which was u by 2 towards the right so if i just add another u by 2 we can see that finally the ground frame velocity of the ring is going to be u and similarly if i do this to the point mass the point mass will finally come to rest in the ground frame so the ground frame picture is going to look something like this so initially the point mass is uh, impart the velocity of u towards the right it will start approaching the ring and the ring will start running away and they are both repelling each other and and uh, remember guys this plus q charge will never cross the center of the ring um, in this particular case right and finally when they are extremely far away from each other the ring will get a velocity of u so this is what case 2 actually is so from here we can easily see that the maximum speed of the ring is going to be u itself so so now let's write down our case 2 if u is less than this particular value then the maximum speed of the ring is going to be u itself so now let's talk about the third particular case. What happens if u is actually greater than this particular value? Again, let's go back to the center of mass frame. Okay, so here, this is the case where u is greater than that critical value, which we figured out earlier. In this case, uh, what will happen is when the ring and the point mass reach the center of mass, then the ring will have some velocity v towards the left and the point mass will also have the same velocity v towards the right. And that's by momentum conservation. As a u is greater than that critical value, now it will not come to rest, right? It will have some velocity when both of them reach the center of mass. And afterwards, what will happen is both of them are going to accelerate. Now the ring is going to move towards the left, the point mass is going to move towards the right of the center of mass, and then they are going to accelerate. So in this particular case, uh, in the center of mass, they will never be at rest, basically. So in the ground frame, let's observe what's happening. So Again, what will happen is the ring will start accelerating, right? As the plus Q charge comes to the right, it will keep accelerating till the point charge reaches its center of curvature, right? So let's say I drew the image of the situation when the plus Q charge reaches the center of the ring. Now what will happen is that when the plus Q charge moves towards the right, it is going to decelerate the ring. So basically the key takeaway is that the ring will accelerate till the point charge reaches its center. And the moment the point charge crosses its center, it will start decelerating the ring. So now we figured out that the maximum speed of the ring will be in this particular situation. Let's just try to figure out the value of V first. So that we can figure out using energy conservation. So the initial kinetic energy of the system, uh, again, in the center of mass frame is half 2m times u by 2 squared. And the final kinetic energy is going to be half 2m times V squared. And the potential energy of the system is K capital Q small q divided by small r, where r is the radii of the ring. So from here, here, 
uh, we get the value of v to be this particular value. So I just took u by 2 common from here and we get this particular value. So now as we have figured out v, the ground frame velocity at this particular location. So now all I have to do is add the velocity of the center of mass, which is u by 2 towards the right. So basically the ground frame velocity of the ring is is going to be u by 2 minus v which is going to be this particular value. So basically if u is greater than this particular value then the maximum speed of the ring is going to be this particular value. Okay so this is the final answer to the question. So if you guys have any doubts you can comment down below. If you did enjoy the video make sure to like share and subscribe and that's it. Thanks for watching.